Hey, 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 Nikki Bell here. No matter where you are and what part of the world you are in, I hope that you're having a good day. So today I am here to talk about food and how it affects the brain. And I know that we live in an instant gratification society, so I'm going to keep it brief. I am, however, going to be looking down at my MacBook because I have taken some notes. Um, so the first thing is um, what you eat directly affects the structure and function of your brain and mood. Um, these particular notes have come from a Harvard study. However, I have studied this same concept um, when I became a yogi. So I do have my yoga teacher instructor certification and I also am a certified life coach. And these are some of the things that we learn and talk about or we learned and talked about during those courses um, that I am certified in. Um, one of the things, and I know this may trigger some folks when I say this, but a lot of times people have what I call a meat brain, right? And I learned that from watching like documentaries like What the Health, right? Uh, and similar documentaries where they talk about the treatment of animals and how they inhumanely um, take them out in order to produce food. And sometimes these animals are crying or they're suffering, they're hurting. Um, and there are certain glands within their body that will secrete uh, certain hormones. And so that once the meat is cut, um, that those hormones are now in your food. And so you are ingesting that pain that that animal felt at that time that they were taken out. Um... And sometimes people wonder why, you know, especially after eating certain foods, you can't sleep. Um, you're feeling cranky, you know, it just, it isn't digesting well. Um, and things of that nature, um, what you eat can definitely affect your mood and the overall function of your brain, um, with that being said. The brain functions best when it gets what we'll call premium fuel, right? Um, this is what it was referred to as in this Harvard study. So premium fuel, like you would put in your car, I think it's 89 for some people who know the number, um, but it's the gas that costs the most <laughs> in layman's terms, right? So when you put premium gas in your car, some say it runs better, right? The gas lasts longer. Depends on who you ask because there are truck drivers who deliver the fuel and they say it's the same gas. So it depends on who you ask, right? Um, it, that basically means you're eating high quality foods. So for some people that might mean organic or locally grown or just something that doesn't have as many pesticides or hormones or steroids in it. So that's your free range eggs or your free range chicken um, or your grass fed uh, cows and things of that nature. Um, but eating high quality foods contains lots of vitamins, minerals and antioxidants, which help to nourish the brain and protect it from oxidative stress and oxidative stress can lead to things like Alzheimer's and dementia just to name a couple things right um, the brain can be damaged if we ingest anything other than premium fuel right so think about your processed foods or your refined foods um, fast food even um, that will be considered low fuel right or or, or low quality gas um, diets high in sugar are harmful to the to the brain um, because your body can't 
process that sugar in an efficient way. And so it just gets stored as fat on the body, which, you know, if it stays in the body, this can lead to dis-ease um, over time. Sugar worsens the body's ability to replace insulin and also promotes inflammation and oxidative stress. So again, um, sugar can be harmful to the body and the body likes bitter, but the tongue likes sweet because we've been conditioned to eat sugar in everything since we were children. Um, I know for myself, you know, I was raised in the type of family that if you fall down and hurt yourself, you weren't giving a hug, you were giving a cookie. Like, oh, it's gonna be, you, you'll be all right, just eat this cookie or eat this candy or eat this piece of cake. You didn't deal with the emotions, you just went to comfort food, right? To feel better. <clears throat> And in your mind as a child, it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to eat the cookie, right? Um, diets high in sugar can also lead to depression, right? Again, people, under, people don't understand why sometimes they're just in a bad mood for no reason, right? Why they're stressed for no reason, and replaying certain thoughts over and over again in their head after they ate this sugary drink or sugary snack um, that may have made them feel good at the time because again we have that comfort food that makes us think of our childhood when we fell down and hurt ourselves and we were given that cookie or that brownie whatever it is whatever you were given if it was macaroni and cheese whatever you were given that's what we normally turn to for emotional support and so that same emotional support or comfort food can then make us become depressed right depending on what we have going on in our lives or just for no reason at all you're just there at home and like all of a sudden you're like oh I'm bored my life is you know is whatever and you know it could lead into it could be mild depression depression doesn't have to be what was me you know pity party um it could just be mild depression where you just don't even realize sometimes that you're, you're depressed right um you're just going through the motions of life and you just don't know you just know that you maybe don't feel right or you may not even recognize or acknowledge that you don't feel right you, it, but but other people may notice it and then if somebody says oh what's wrong with you ain't nothing wrong with me you know you may give that type of response or leave me alone or you know Again, not realizing it's because of the diet, you know. Um, the gut, it has another brain, right? There are three brains in the body, and the gut has one of those brains. Um, so again, it can lead to depression. So this leads me to the next point, which serotonin is produced in the gut, right? Um, serotonin is a neurotransmitter that helps regulate sleep and appetite, mediates mood, inhibits pain, and limits inflammation. Right? So if you're not getting enough good uh, serotonin or good bacteria in the gut, the opposite effects can happen. Right? Um, my recommendations, right? Eat clean at least for 30 days. When I say eat clean, I mean eat anything that swims or flies and grows from the ground or from a tree, right? So basically, mainly fresh fruits and vegetables, more fresh fruits and vegetables than anything else. Nuts are good. You know, certain grains are good. You might want to look to see what grains, because everybody's body is different. Some people work better when they do the blood type diet. So you can look up the blood type diet and find out what's right, which one is right for you. If you know your blood type. Um, um, drink your water or at least get your water from your fresh fruits and vegetables again for at least 30 days and if you do um, eat anything that swims or flies make sure it's baked or, or, or broiled and not fried you know do your best to avoid frying um, if at all possible 
um, and try to get lean cuts of meat. You know, not, not too much fatty. I know a lot of people love the fat on the meat, but you know, try to get less fatty portions and get more lean portions. And then, like I said, bake it or broil it rather than fry it. Um, if, if you really want to ramp up the good bacteria and serotonin, eat plant-based for 30 days. Um, eat plant-based for at least one day a week. Eat plant-based for an entire week. Whatever you feel that you can, um, can do. A lot of people say, oh, well, I don't like vegetables, or I don't want to just eat vegetables. I need meat, right? Um, and a lot of times it's just about the texture because meat doesn't taste like anything if you don't season it. And your vegetables aren't going to taste like anything if you don't season them, right? Um, like Unless you're eating a salad and you put some type of dressing, but still that's some type of seasoning. You can keep your dressing simple, you know, um, apple cider vinegar, salt and pepper, and maybe even some olive oil, some good olive oil. You want the good fats, right? And you don't necessarily want to heat your olive oil up, so if you put it on your salad, um, you'll get more of the benefits by not heating the olive oil. <clears throat> you want to avoid things like um, starches. And that's mainly all of your white foods, your potatoes, your rice, your breads. Um, cereals are really not the best for you. Um, they, they're, most of them are very high in sugar. Everything has sugar in it. Um, and that's why we, it's recommended that you do fresh fruits and vegetables because anything, any type of sauce, any type of salad dressing, so spaghetti sauce, uh, um, teriyaki sauce, yum yum sauce, soy sauce, all of these different sauces, they're high in sodium and they have high amounts of sugar in them, right? And then they ha usually have a whole bunch of ingredients that you can't pronounce, right? So if you're going to eat something, it should be 10 ingredients or less in that item and you should be able to pronounce everything in that particular food um, that's including ketchup mayonnaise um, all the different condiments right avoid the high fructose corn syrup and all of these different things red color number 40 you you want to avoid anything artificial right those are considered your processed foods right your unrefined sugars right even juice the juice that you get from the store is pasteurized which means they heated it up so it loses the nutritional value from the heat if you're going to if you want juice make your own if you if you feel so inclined to do so. If you don't have a juicer, you can use a blender. You can put, say, you cut up an apple, put it in the blender, add a little water to it, and you know, and then strain it at the end. And you know, not a whole lot of water, just a little bit to, you know, so that the blender can get going and you can get those little bits um, to grind as finely as possible. And like I said, strain it. And you can even use the pulp um, to make bake some cookies and use that as your sugar. Although you want to avoid flour too, but um, let's say you make some oatmeal. And really, oatmeal is oatmeal is really used to fatten horses. So um, if your goal is to lose weight, I would recommend avoiding oatmeal. Um, I know that we were told that it's good for you, and 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 I get that. But again, 
if you're someone who wants to lose weight during this 30-day process if you decide to try it i would recommend avoiding oatmeal because oatmeal and you can look it up oats are used to fatten horses um yeah <laughs> and that includes granola i i think that some people don't realize that granola is oats right oatmeal granola it's the same thing it's just that granola is they make it crunchy i think they put it in the oven or something and like caramelize it um so that it clumps up into like little clusters so you can like you know have little bite-sized pieces to eat or eat with a spoon um without cooking it but granola is essentially oatmeal so you want to avoid things that i remember once i um this young lady she was eating salads and she was like i don't understand why i'm not losing weight and come to find out she was putting croutons on her salads that she was eating every day and so if you put say 10 croutons on your salad that's like the equivalent of a slice of bread so you're essentially having a slice of bread every time you have a salad not knowing so it kind of is the same concept when it comes to oatmeal if you're adding oats to you know your yogurt or your smoothie um or your parfaits and things like that you're essentially adding you know an unhealthy fat to your diet and so then if you wonder why you're not losing weight, that small little change can make a big difference. And again, I always say, don't just listen to what I'm saying, do your own research. Again, oats are used to fatten horses. Look it up. <laughs> so that's, what, that's how um, what we eat can affect the brain. Um, is the mind body is con and, and the mind and the body are connected um, so I just kind of gave you a really simple over overview of how that can happen um, and again I know this may be triggering and some people may not like it but I'm doing my best to be of service to those who like the service please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe and as always love y'all Mwah! <laughs>